Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Plan. As bioavailability is always a big question when taking supplements, we are looking for other formats that will give us better results. With this in mind, we have recently been investigating liposomal formats for our supplements. Today I'm going to walk through what we have found, what are liposomes, what benefits do they confer, and what data is there available. We are happy to say that Alive by Science, the pioneer of liposomal NMN products, has very kindly agreed to sponsor products for our next NMN trial. It helps a lot for our costs as two guinea pigs. They also offer 10% discount for all their products to our audience. Please take a look at the link in the description or the pinned comment. They have a comprehensive lineup of liposomal products other than liposomal NMN, fisetin, calcium AKG, epigenin, berberin and quercetin are coming soon. Please note that by buying the, their products through our link you are supporting our channel to continue to produce health and longevity videos as well. Thank you so much for your support. Let's have a look at what liposomes are. Liposomes are made up of lipids, typically phospholipids. They are composed of a polar head which is attracted to water and two non-polar tails which are repelled by water. These molecules arrange themselves into a bilayer with the heads facing outwards. The molecules can be arranged into balls with a hollow center and a bilayer of phospholipids wrapped around that center. The hollow in the center can be used to contain bits of genetic material or various molecules which we want to deliver to the body. The surfaces of the liposome can also have various chemicals attached to improve the delivery. For example, polyethylene glycol or PEG makes it more stable and resistant to the immune system and processing by the liver, while some of the others help target the liposome to the correct kind of cell. Our cell membranes, which keep many drugs out, have a very similar structure to that of a liposome with a bilayer of phospholipids. This is important as one of the key delivery mechanisms of liposomes is for them to fuse with the cell membrane and enter the cell before breaking down to release their payload, a process called cytosis. In this case, the payload is a piece of DNA, but it could also be a small molecule such as NMN. So that is what they are. Why do we want to deliver drugs in this way? Let's have a look at this paper. Liposomes as advanced delivery systems for nutraceuticals. The primary benefit is that they should provide higher bioavailability compared to other oral supplements, especially when coated with PEG, which makes them invisible to the immune system and liver. They can be used orally, a low invasive method of delivery. The drugs are protected from the environment in the GI tract and also uptake across the mucous barrier is improved. As we discussed, they can enter the cell more easily than many molecules. This does depend on the size of the liposome, where the uptake increased ninefold from a size of 236 nanometers down to 97 nanometers and 34-fold as they went down to 64 nanometers. They can be used to deliver drugs which dissolve in water or not. And they can be used if a person cannot swallow a tablet as the protection is at the liposome level, not in the tablet. As a powder, they can provide adjustable dosages. And it's cost effective as a lower dose is required. And for the potential concerns, the top one is the higher price as liposomal definitely incurs additional manufacturing costs. Manufacturing is also not easy and to get high quality liposomes which are all small size is difficult and adds to the expense. Liposomes can be unstable and increased intracellular delivery if this is not the target. So that is the theory. What do we actually see in terms of in vivo data? For that we will have a look at this paper bioavailability of polyphenol liposomes, a challenge ahead. These are an example of the polyphenols in this review paper, which include fisetin, questin and resveratrol. Here are the studies that they included in the review. And we can see that for fisetin and quercetin, they specifically mention improved bioavailability. This is the graph from the fisetin paper. 
showing the increased serum quantity of fisetin with liposomal over free fisetin. The dose was, however, much smaller for the liposomal fisetin, leading to a 47 times more availability. In this case, the delivery was via injection, but we can still see that the liposomal fisetin was in the bloodstream for longer. This slide is from a different paper, looking at vitamin C concentrations in the blood when it is taken orally as either a solid or a liposomal form. Again, we can see liposomal form had a higher concentration than non-liposomal. So based on this, we think that liposomal seems to have promised to address the bioavailability questions that are raised about supplements such as NMN. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.